go, I'm back from the woods. We had four different rocket stoves with four different insulation materials running at the same time. And as I conclude this section on basic rocket stoves, I thought I'd give you some of my observations from that experience as a kind of conclusion before we look at some of the issues and some of the solutions, some modifications, some additional extras to make these stoves a bit more efficient. When it came to the actual material of the stoves, I didn't notice any major difference with what insulation chamber we used, be it a biscuit barrel or a paint tin, they all seem to work perfectly fine. So that didn't seem to be much of a factor. When it came to the actual insulation material we're using, um, got to be completely honest with you guys, I forgot my laser thermometer. I have no way of scientifically testing which is the most effective insulation material. But from a pure layman's, an hour after the fire had died, I could not physically touch this with naked flesh. The charcoal dust and the perlite ones were noticeably hotter. So if you guys want to go out there and get the most efficient insulation, possibly look at those. I can't say it's the best because you know there's different volumes, one's in a paint tin, one's in an ice bucket, but something to consider. When it came to actually containing those insulation materials, um, really happy with that little experiment. Both the fire cement and the river clay worked perfectly fine. After the fire dies, they would tip them upside down and nothing cracked or fell out. So that was really good. A um, couple of issues. It was quite hard running four fires at the same time because obviously on camera, I can't move them about particularly much to put the airflow into them from the breeze. And also they were quite hard to touch to do that anyway. So just something to consider how important the airflow in these is. Um, if you're gonna use these in a shelter, that could be an issue. You might have to be the person actually supplying that air when they start to sputter a bit. And that can mean getting on all fours and blowing into that fuel magazine, which you might have issues if you can struggle to get up or down, if you have mobility issues, but that's one of the things I'm gonna look at with these modifications. And also, I was out in the woods with these stoves for four hours. Didn't intend to be that long, didn't have a clock, just lost track of time and the ash buildup in the fuel magazines was getting quite noticeable. And that's not a problem, it's gonna take a lot of ash to snuff out your flame. And the embers are still gonna be hot enough to reignite it when you blow into it. But if you're gonna use these overnight, that could be a bit more of an issue. So I'm gonna look at a modification to safely get rid of that ash and those embers and those charred bits of wood. So I can hear what you're saying, but Zoe, what am I supposed to do with all these lids I've been collecting? Well, depending on how you got your lids, they may be a bit battered up. I think this one was taken off with a knife. And this one's a bit ragged around the edge too. But if you get the bottom of the tin can off, you'll actually notice you've got a bit of a lip just around the back edge. And that's what we're gonna be using to make our ember scoop. So it's really simple. I only need a couple of tools. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so we just take off the edges. So we've got tin snips, which are going to take off the sides. And on the other side, also be careful of the edge. And then we're going to cut it in half. Middle. Now we'll just do a quick test to see how it'll fit in our stove. Also, we've changed the diameter, so it fits, but it's a little bit too uh, scratchy on the edges. So we'll just take off a little bit more. And that should do nicely. So just a quick test. Yep. So how do you secure this to a stick? Well there's a couple of different methods. The one I quite like is if you come in from the bottom and cut to the midway point you've got a nice little fold there. And I like to just Take that fold, make it vertical, and then we've got a point where we can batten on a handle. So just a battened piece of wood and slide into that batten point, if I can find where it was. There we go. 
And obviously if you want to secure it some more, you can just bend the rest of that tab around the top. Another attachment method we can look at for doing for these ember catches is if we go a little distance in and go almost halfway, turn it over and then do exactly the same. So we've got two sections, we've almost gone halfway through the can. We'll take our uh, handy dandy stick, which we'll be using, we can stick it there and then we can just fold one side over and then fold the other side over and sort of lock them in place with a bit of pressure. So there we go, there's another attachment method. And while we're still working with tin can lids, it'd be remiss of me not to show you how to turn them into a nice, easy and simple cutting blade. So, all we need is another one of our leftover can lids. This is the lid, as you can see there's no edge to it. And this is a lot easier if you've got a pair of pliers. You might have them on your EC, you might have them on your toolkit. So, all we're going to do is we're going to curve over one side to the middle and the other side to meet it. So we don't have to be particularly scientific here. There is room for error. At the end of the day, we're trying to make something functional. So that's about halfway. Then on the other side. Also be careful of the edges because they can be a bit sharp. So what we're going to do, we're going to push one side down press flat. I'm going to use the uh, pliers to help me with that. So just squish the metal on the edge. And then fold that one edge over. And we'll squish that flat as well because as you can see it's not sitting flat. And then just make it a bit easier to hold. We're going to fold the bottom roughly over to the middle. And then I'm going to squish that flat too. And just sharpen this top edge and you get a really useful and effective cutting edge made out of the tops of tin cans. So another upgrade we can look at, especially if you're going to be using it for cooking or boiling water, is turning the top of our chimney into a pot stand. It's just like this version here, which kind of looks like an old castle's ramparts. So it doesn't have to be extreme as this, but all it is is four cuts or four sections remained, more or less, across from each other. So all I've done on this one is in fashionable green pen, just mark out four sections. I'm just gonna cut down to this line here. That's what, about an inch. And that's gonna be how we're gonna make our pot stand chimney. So trying to keep in camera focus. Just draw the lines. So I'm just gonna go down to that line there. So there we go, those are our cuts. And all I'm going to do is just flex the metal parts we don't want. 
This is actually a lot easier if you make slightly smaller holes. So, for example, now it's so much easier to flex. I'm just going to do it a couple of times. And I'll break off. And then do the same again. To be left with our green section. And the space between this one, this one too hard to move. That one's actually a bit easier. And then we've got this one we're getting rid of, which looks a bit big, but we'll give it a go. Get it off you. And finally, this one here. That one's definitely a bit big. It's just flexy, it's not really breaking. So I'm just gonna give that one a helping hand. And then do the same method again. And all I'm doing is obviously just heating up the can by flexing it where it's weak. So all I'm doing is folding it down and then moving it back and forth until it breaks off. So there we go. That's another example of a pot stand we can do just at the top. And you don't need to be this extreme. I just really like the look of this. Of course we just don't have to use tin cans, we can also use what I'm going to be using today, which is more of that fire cement. So I'm going to be making a pot stand in some of this and this rocket stove behind me. So there we go, just quickly, I've just made some vaguely square shapes using that leftover fire cement. And while we're talking about obviously resting things on top of this rocket stove, one of the things we could look at is turning it into a mass storage heater. And all you're going to need is one of these. This is just a terracotta flower pot. Uh, a metal mug will work just as well. And all we've got to do is simply rest it over our flame. That way, it catches the heat from the flame and conducts the excess heat through the actual material of either the pot or the mug. It works really well with uh, candles as well, it makes it almost unbearable to touch. So if you want to use this as a heating solution and turn it into a bushcraft style radiator, get a flower pot or a metal mug and turn it into a mass storage heater. So here's another basic incarnation of the rocket stove. We've got our fuel magazine, our fuel shelf, our combustion chamber, and our insulation chamber. And the only modification I've made, you might be able to see it just over here, is I've actually drilled a hole straight through the insulation chamber and into the combustion chamber. You see it over there in the corner? And that's so I can take one of these stainless steel straws that I got from the grocery store and I can put that directly into the stove. Although we've already got an air intake anyway, this is a little bit fiddly. If you've got mobility issues or anything like that, we can then use this straw to blow directly into the coals. And admittedly, that is quite low down, but we can always extend it using more of these straws by connecting them together. Or we could look at something different, like a, some sort of braided steel tubing, like you'd find underneath your sink, or in the plumbing supply department, or the neck of one of those angled poise lamps. So here's another option, if you're struggling to get on all fours to blow underneath your fuel shelf. One of the final upgrades you can look at doing for one of these rocket stoves, I'm not 100% sure on how to display it very well for YouTube. I'll have to come up with some measurements, possibly do another video on it. But it's to have an angled fuel magazine. This one's about 45 degrees. And the idea is, as the fuel burns down, because wood can do some pretty weird things when it's burning, it actually fuels the flame itself. So you don't have to be constantly adding fuel, which would be great for an overnight fire. So I'll show you how to get it started with just the fuel magazine 
and the combustion chamber but I'll have to have a bit of a tweak around for how we get at an insulation chamber. Can't believe I've never actually displayed this in this video already. Maybe as time's gone on I've got a bit better at making holes in these rocket stoves but I have been filming this video for 10 months now. So it's just a handy dandy all as you can see I've drawn around the uh, tin lid like you saw me do previously and all we're going to do is make a hole in it with our trusty owl and then take a lovely pair of tin snips which have eluded me briefly and the way to get you just need to get a bit of space made first with some a bit of surgical cuts so I'm just going to make a big, bit of a square so I can get some room to move about like so and then from that I can then go to the edge of my lines and just making sure it runs down the actual edge that's closest to me on the tin snips I can just go around and tidy it up so as you can see that's the existing way that we've done these combustion chambers and fuel magazines just a simple sort of linear hole and add our can in but to make it an angled fuel magazine what we need to do is we need to go more of an egg shape we need to cut a bit more of the can at the top that gives it an ability to apply pressure to the fuel magazine. Again, I'm not completely comfortable with the exact measurements, that's why I'm not showing you guys exactly. But as you see, now if we put our fuel magazine in, you can see there's a big hole here where my finger's poking out. And then all we've got to do is we've got to cut down the can so it rests like that so we have a nice little angle to it which will be our self-feeding angle and to do that we have to get rid of quite a bit of the can so about a quarter of the way down is where I'm going to start I'm just going to go down this line that's already pre-existing and then I'm just going to cut around the edges again I'm not too comfortable with how this is when it comes to being repeated but if I get a mastery of it I'll do a video of it in the future so as you can see I've really quickly cut down the can which then in theory when I take it and put it in our rocket stove I apply the pressure to make it go in you see it's not, still not quite perfect it's still about 45 degrees because this bottom lip is resting on the inside of the can so we need to trim that down as well. So there we go, we trimmed it down, we trimmed down that bottom lip. We'll just try again quickly. This is always hard to do on camera. But you're getting a better idea of the angle we're looking for. Now that's looking very similar to the one we've got burning away just in front of me. And as you can see we just propped up the stick on a bit of wood so that uh, it'll handle the weight when the actual fire burns it down but that's what you want to be doing. You want to be doing a slightly bigger hole at the top of your combustion chamber and we're cutting down our fuel magazine really drastically with that really sharp angle just so it interfaces in there and then we apply a bit of tension on that bottom edge to make it become an angled fuel magazine. But I say just needs a bit of practice and I'll be able to rectify how it gives in a really easy way that I can show you guys in future. So just a quick amendment to that um, angled rocket stove. When I was doing it on this version, it won't show up very well for the camera, but I was using this sort of larger side as the base. And as I was fiddling about, the boyfriend came along and said, why don't you just do it upside down? So I put it in upside down, and the issue was that it blocked the entire sort of area of the internal of the combustion chamber. I 
like that. So although we got a good angle, I still couldn't you know, use it because it's not got anywhere to burn. So using a Sharpie, I just draw around the curvature of the inside of the can and then took it off. Again, using tin snips, I've just stuck it back on it with tape just for the purpose of this video. So here's the boyfriend's modification. So we've got that angled side that we did and then we've got the inside curvature of our can, which when we put that in there, gives us our angled feed. So there we go, just another alternative way to get the same kind of angle on one of these angled rocket stoves. Right, thank you very much for watching this extended version of the rocket stove video. Thank you very much for watching, all your views are really appreciated. But if you want to consider liking me on YouTube to let me know I'm doing a good job, please do. Or consider subscribing to the channel. I'm in year two of survival mistakes now, and I just broke my 100 subscriber barrier. So I'm really happy about that. Thank you very much, everyone that subscribed. And I'm also active on Facebook. We've got a group on Facebook, which is Survival Mistakes, where I chat with my fans and give ideas of videos I'm working on, or just ideas. And if you are one of my fans that's come from Facebook, thank you very much, guys and girls. I love every single one of you. I love all your comments and all your likes. I really appreciate all your engagement. And if you want to hint as to what I'm up to in between videos, check out Twitter. I'm at Zoe Survival on Twitter. So, as ever, there's only one way for me to end the video. Thank you very much for watching, and get out there and do the impossible every day.